McAfee is an athlete, not a reporter. He has become the epitome of athlete encroachment on terrain historically controlled by non-athlete journalists. And to put it mildly, the journalists are not happy about it. McAfee couldn't care less. Pat McAfee's influence is bigger than his audience. His hours-long show airs during TV's midday death. My God, but he doesn't follow journalistic protocol. How despairing, all right, that he has a big audience and he puts together a very cost-efficient show and he doesn't follow journalistic protocol. I remember the Sky King and John Smith says, seeing the dissident rights veneration of that guy really put me off that crowd. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get the veneration of the Sky King. So this guy stole a plane in Seattle and, and took it up into the air and he told uh, air traffic control, look, I'm just a white guy. Right. I don't have any future in this country. And then he, he crashed the plane spectacularly, but he didn't hurt anyone else. So that is, to, that is to his favor that he didn't hurt anyone else. But yeah, people who venerated the Sky King were marginalized losers, you know, aligned with marginalized causes. Head zone. When most sports fans are at work or school, it averages just 332,000 live viewers on its linear broadcast, according to the most recent figures from EA. Yeah, that extreme victim mentality is repulsive. I, I completely, completely agree with you. Now, wh what are the highbrow following journalistic protocol shows that uh, Pat McAfee is, is replacing? Like Sports Center? Is he replacing editions of Sports Center? Oh, what a loss to our culture that we have Pat McAfee doing shows on ESPN, not following journalistic protocols. ESPN and factoring in other platforms like ESPN's YouTube channel and TikTok, its daily audience tops out at just under 900,000, a fraction of the eight-figure viewership for Monday Night Football. But the numbers belie how much attention he gets for the more provocative things that are said on the show, including the dingbat views of the Jets quarterback and anti-vaxxer Aaron Rodgers. Airtime equals power, and no one at- Does airtime equal power? All right, there is a philosophy behind that statement, and the philosophy is that we evolve to be gullible, and it's a subscription to the zombie bite theory of information, that if you give people certain tantalizing bits of information, they will be turned into zombies. And so if you expose people to you know, distant right political views, well, they'll, they'll just turn into Nazis, that people are just incredibly gullible, and you, you dole out misinformation or disinformation or racism or vaccine skepticism, and then people completely against their own best interests, they'll just fall for it, and they'll be bit by this dangerous disinformation, and they'll just turn into zombies, right? It's, right this is a journalistic article following journalistic protocol in a prestigious magazine, The Atlantic, but the philosophical foundations for it are incredibly weak. Bro, weak epistemics. ESPN spends more time on air than Pat McAfee. From the moment he arrived, he's arguably been the network's most influential mouthpiece and indisputably its most polarizing. If you're a newcomer to the Pat McAfee show, it can be tough to follow. The show is filled with locker room joshing delivered in the outer Pittsburgh Yinzer accent of McAfee's youth. It's one of America's more unsung regional accents, super fun to imitate. But McAfee and his supporting panel of regulars, even the ones who aren't from Pittsburgh, lay it on so thick you might need to consult an English to Yinzer dictionary. Teams win championships. Joe Flacco, the name of the aging Super Bowl winning quarterback, is pronounced Geo Flacco. Even the ticker at the bottom of the screen has a Yinzer accent. Program is spelled P R O G R U M. Everyone observes a firm dress code down, way down. McAfee, who has bouffant hair that crests like a giant wave at Nazare, prefers black tees and white tanks. Boston Connor, one of two members of McAfee's peanut gallery known as the Toxic Table, has a porn stash, an intentional mullet, and an endless supply of animal stencil t-shirts. Wolves, lions, elephants, snow... Right, just so much contempt. All right, this article would have been stronger without all the contempt. Bowels. He looks as though he saw Zach Galifianakis in The Hangover and thought to himself, that guy looks awesome. Ty Schmidt, the other half of the Toxic Table, favors Green Bay Packers jerseys and University of Iowa hoodies. Mac right, so I think the author here is Ethan, no, Devin Gordon. So do, do you really think that uh, lighting on the contempt like this will make your case stronger? Fee will often wrap up segments by leading all of them in a round of applause for themselves, like they just aced a tackling drill. Good seg, good seg, he'll say. 